So, did anybody else enjoy this as much as I did? my channel is Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss two distant strangers available right now on Netflix now this short film stars Joey Badass little rapper and is written and directed by Trayvon Free now before I get into everything I thought about this film what I initially thought when I first started watching it, and what I thought about it later on when I completed the film I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss all things. It's amazing what we can do in 30 minutes. guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this film now before we even get started i had just came off of them and if you aren't new here you know exactly how i feel about the them series from amazon now i didn't go into this watching any trailers reading anything i thought i was just putting it on something you know for me to go to sleep to I did not know exactly what this was going to turn into, but boy, when it did, it was amazing. Now, with this short film only being 30 minutes, which I also didn't know, we waste no time jumping right in and diving into the point of what's going on here. Initially, you see a young man, young successful man, wake up, nice little lavish little New York apartment. It wasn't that big, but you know how much shit in New York cost. <laughs> And he's waking up from a one night stand feeling good about himself. All he is trying to do is get home to his dog. And then we get into why I was about to cut it off and I just was not interested in seeing it. We get into him, you know, being, you know, harassed, tackled to the ground and, you know, him being profiled in a neighborhood just for being black. And it turns into him being thrown on the ground. And then, you know, you're resisting because... Uh, this clearly racist officer doesn't want to, he doesn't want you to go through his things. I, you know, it's so much talk of, I know my rights. And we even have everything down to the queue of the bystander, you know, recording and saying, you know, he wasn't even doing anything. He's just walking off casually trying to smoke his cigarette, but it smells funny. And he has too much money, you know, to be like, how the fuck can you have too much money <sighs> for a black person? <laughs> But we get right into what we know all too well and what we see so damn often. This black man being profiled and resisting because he doesn't want, want to let you illegally search his things and he's tackled to the ground. And then three officers appear out of nowhere and we get into George Floyd, Eric Gardner, you know, the knee in the back, the strangling, the restraining, the stop resisting. But all the while, there are, you know, three or four officers on him and he's yelling, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And I was sitting there, I was like, what the, f what? Are we about to cut this off? This, no, I, no. And boom, he wakes up. Say what? I ain't cut it off. The fact that he was murdered and he just woke up. And I realized that they were trying to take the Groundhog Day effect. I mean, if you're a little, little younger, the Happy Death Day effect and put it to this type of premise became really interesting to me. And it took me out of this being, you know, the typical, you know, we're hearing so much of this is, you know, black trauma porn. And it took me out of that. And this is exactly what I meant when I was getting, you know, digging into them. And it was just like so much of the same. This is so predictable. This is to be expected. Not saying that I want anyone to throw a fucking parade for something so horrible. But that immediately intrigued me. And it interests me right off the bat. And I just didn't cut it off. And then that's when I paused it and went and read the premise. 
the actual in the time i was like well well damn and then this is 30 minutes this is a short film what are we going to do in this 30 minutes man so once we realize that it's the groundhog day effect and we go through so many emotions so shortly with this character man this took a really big turn for me and turned it to something just totally different we get into him you know we do have you know slight interaction it's very brief but it's enough for them to build you know a kind of relationship between the two even though it is a one night stand we get the interaction between them and you know him just realizing i keep reliving the same thing over and over again and he is trying to get away from the cop played by um andrew howard officer merc of course officer merc yeah officer merc <sighs> Getting into Officer Merck, we instantly see that he has an agenda. And the agenda is to kill this black man no matter what. No matter what the circumstances are. You continue to see him, you know, come out. And because, you know, this isn't, we're, we're going to get into um, uh, Carter being, you know, not your everyday black man. No, he is, you know, financially well off. He has this, you know, nice little lavish apartment. He has, you know, a dog. He has, you know, young, gifted, and black. <laughs> he has, you know, opportunity. He has this lot of cash because, because he's, you know, a cartoonist. We're, we're going to get into that because I want to touch on that. But it's just like, it's just like, you know, why me? Why me? I'm just trying to get home to my dog. And each time he steps out, you know, you know he's not going to get away. And you see him killed every single time. And for some reason, it just did not sting as much and become trauma for me because I knew there was a narrative being discussed and it was going to lead us somewhere, even with it just being 30 minutes. I didn't feel like they were just killing him multiple times for no reason. Because you went today in the situations that we as black people are constantly put in involving the police, there was always a narrative of, well, what could you have done different? What could she or he have done different? What were they doing to get themselves in that situation? And the main thing you get from here and the Groundhog Day effect, he was doing nothing. He was doing nothing. You don't have to be doing anything. I love that. You, you don't have to be doing anything. When someone wants to do something to you, they're going to do it. We continuously see him jump up and he's pissed off more, you know, having to relive this nightmare. I get up from my one night stand. I have conversation. Okay, he stopped me for the money. Let me let me move the money. Let me let me just, you know, remove it. Boom, shot. Oh, he stopped me. Maybe I, you know, bumped this man the wrong way with this coffee. And he stopped me because boom, shot. Oh, yeah, let, let me just, you know, hey, hey, I'm not even gonna step out at all. Every time I step out of this apartment, I'm shot. I'm just going to stay in the apartment. The strategy of um, that, you know, apartment number being upside down and then looking like a nine and they you, them using that premise for him to go, you know, I'm we're going to stay in. And they, uh, how many times do we see the wrong apartment, the wrong house? Oh, we, we, you know, came in busting in shooting and killed the wrong person. And it had me thinking of, um, I can't, re I can't remember his name, but the guy who was, you know, minding his business, eating ice cream on his couch. And, you know, it was mistaken. Oh, I thought you were in my... And she's yelling and she's hysterical. It's like, isn't this a part? We got a call. We got a warrant for the such... It didn't matter. It did not matter what he did. It still ended with the same result. And I just felt like that was so amazing and so different to use such a horrible premise and put it here to where it just wasn't so straining for us to see him continuously, you know, get up and keep trying and still die every single time. Do you, it was like crazy how, how fast he was dying in 30 damn minutes. <sighs> I got it. Now, after we get to the point of him just leaving, being so frustrated because he keeps waking up and dying every day and reliving this nightmare, and we get to him having the conversation with the young lady of, you know, what would you do if someone was trying to kill you every day? This is when a lot of stuff that I like started to happen in the story. Uh, with that simple question and him asking, what would you do if somebody was trying to kill you every day? And she says, I would try to kill them back. 
a word like it spoke so much to me because we have endless killings from things that were you know routine oh this was a routine traffic stop oh this was you know they were trespassing oh it is so much and it's just like how do you expect people to genuinely stop and pull over and give you license and reg registration or step out of the car or be handcuffed when they are in fear of their lives. Me getting stopped for a simple ticket could be my last fucking stop ever. So you, you, you get things like resistance, but then you get things like when people, just like the young man with the recent situation and the lady mistaking <laughs> her taser for her gun and he, you know, he was, he started to resist. The, the, when people are acting out of fear because you're constantly being killed, you're going to get some resistance. That's why we get questions like, yeah, I would try to kill them back. What do you expect? What do you think is happening here? Get it out of my face. Now, not only did I really enjoy the Groundhog Day effect and us getting, you know, to relive that day with him because it, it, and it's sad, but it was just great just to know that he was going to get to wake up again because nobody else does. I also like the song that was playing, you know, every time he stepped out, he had his, uh, his headphones in. It's by, uh, Bruce in the rain, just called the way it is. And it is sampled by Tupac for Changes. Man, I was waiting on him to play Changes because that's it's that song still hits now. You know, but tell the cops, can't touch this. I don't trust this. When they try to rush, I bust this. It's the sound of my tool. You say it ain't cool. My mom didn't raise no fool. And as long as I stay black, I gotta stay strapped. Cause I okay, I, I was waiting on that. I really love that choice of song because it's, it's just saying, you know, this is the way it is. Things will never change. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. This is what's been ha happening. It's just put differently. Things ain't changing. They haven't. It's also at this point that we really get into Officer Merck with him trying to just go out and identify with him and let him know this is what is going on. It was so casual. I love that they didn't, you know, spend any time trying to convince Officer Merck or to convince, you know, homegirl in the apartment, I keep reliving the same day over and over again. He just said it and it was. Though when he went out, you know, Officer Merck needed a whole lot of convincing. And even with all that evidence in his face, he said, you know, he's ready to go for his money, go for his gun, go for, you know, his funny smelling cigarette. And after he just put so much in his face, it's just, at this point, he's like, I, I can't deny it anymore. You know what? Mm. If it's all of that, you know, just just go. Get the hell out of here, kid. And as soon as he hits the corner, <laughs> he shot courtesy of a couple of dudes running from some officers. And he he's just standing there. Cat man, if he all oh, smells like stop stopping to smoke that cigarette, just go. <laughs> but he shot. And I love what that said about, you know, even though this one let me go, there were two more waiting just like it's always another one to replace the other one there is not you know any real net of protection there was someone waiting for him just as corrupt right around the corner like you you know you want chasing me i was coming towards you still shot and then we get into the ending where i was about to I was about to leave the film again, y'all. I was about to leave again. Now it is at this point that I did almost check out because when these situations happen, there's always so much of a big conversation of, well, you know, well, what was the person doing? Where, where were they going? And that main one, you know, if maybe if he just knew who I was or knew who my brother was, my sister was, my uncle was, my father was, they wouldn't have done that. They weren't that type of person. So him going out and trying to identify with that man and that corrupt ass officer to go, if you take me home, I can get home. Nobody can touch me if you are the one to take me home. And it just had me thinking about all the people who just wanted to fucking go home. I was just trying to go home. If you had just taken me home, if you had just, you know, written my ticket and let me go. If you had just, you know, let me sit, you know, and hold it and ride out my little, my little ticket. I could have just went home. But them sitting in that fucking car and having that kiki was pissing me off. 
and they were, you know, they're talking and identifying with each other in the office. Yo, I, you know, I never took the time to talk to one of you. You know, one of you. I never took the time to talk to one of you. And it's, you know, so much talk of, uh, you know, you guys, you know, are on first place and you know we're outside of the stadium you guys have a head start and as you know if you didn't it's so much of them identifying with each other and you know there seems to be a core of understanding <sighs> the only thing i liked about that conversation was him asking um why did you ever join the force why did you want to be a police officer in the first place and he goes you know to protect and serve you know that textbook answer it's like you know i don't want that why did you really do it it's like, you know, well, I was picked on. I was bullied and I got tired of it. It's like, oh, so you became the bully. No, I, I, I joined to help. Because there are so many officers who join on for the wrong fucking reasons. Who sign up to protect and serve for the wrong fucking reasons. Everybody who's on to protect and serve does, does not have everybody's best interest at heart. And this officer did not. So for him to sit in there and talk with him and take him home, I was like, oh, we gonna end it like this? Oh, so all we need to do is try to talk and identify with officers because you see people try to do that before. You have seen people try to beg for their life and they still get fucking murdered. <sighs> but they're rioting and he's like pretty much at the door. When he let him out and that officer did not just, you know, pull off, the fact that he got out of the car, I was like, it was a fucking saving grace because if he would have just let him go in that apartment, it just would have just killed everything for me that I felt like this this short film was trying to say. And when he's, you know, almost at the door and he says, you know, you almost had me, kid. You trying to identify, you know, trying to, you know, appeal to my positive, you know, my nature. That was good. You know, maybe next time. And fucking kills him as he's trying to just walk in his house. That did it for me. That solidified what I felt like this was really trying to say there was never a moment anytime he woke up to identify with this officer's good nature there was no good nature his entire agenda for this whole damn short film was to kill him everybody does not have your best interest at heart there are some officers who just want to kill black people that's all he wanted to do and I knew that's all he wanted to do this entire film when we when he first killed him and he was strangling him. And you saw that look that so many of them have on their fucking face when they're taking a black person's life. And there's just like a possession. There's so much joy. There was so much joy in his face. There was so much joy in his face when he strangled him. There was so much joy in his face when he, you know, oh, he's going for my weapon and killed him and shot him. He was so eager to kill him each and every time. So there was no way we were just going to get here and have this talk and have everything just fucking be okay. And now you understand where I'm coming from. He never wanted to understand. All he wanted to do was kill him. And that's what he did. It just made me really happy to just acknowledge, just to have a, any film, short film, short whatever, just acknowledge there are just plain old racist cops with an agenda who want to kill black people. Everybody's not misunderstood. Everybody's not, you know, oh, I thought this was something. Oh, I thought, you know, it's that favorite. Oh, I thought he was going for a weapon. Oh, I thought this was the right apartment. Oh, I thought he was resisting. Oh, I thought he was about to run. Some of those things just don't matter. Do some people make mistakes? Yes. As often as it's happening now? No. Some people just want to kill other fucking black people. It's getting hot, y'all. <laughs> of course, we end with him waking up again. Because, you know, maybe next time, kid. Maybe, maybe you can make me feel for you next time. Maybe next time I won't blow your brains out. Yeah. We end with him, you know, getting up and persevering and pretty much saying, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue to get home to my dog. And I thought that was to say to us, we can't give up. We need to keep going. Yes, they are killing us. Yes, it seems nonstop, but we need to persevere. Now, out of everything, there was like really just one thing I did not like about this, this short film. One small thing. The one thing I did not like about this movie was that the protagonist, Carter, was, you know, displayed to be, you know, so innocent. So wide-eyed, you know, he has his whole future ahead of him. He's a cartoonist. He's educated, you know, nice, well-do apartment, you know, on, on the rise to be, you know, up and coming, no priors. You know, he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
I just don't want it to be said that every single person who happens to get stopped, black person who happens to get stopped, they don't need to be, you know, a renaissance man familiar, you know, with James Bald Baldwin and, you know, Marcus Garvey to be worthy for you to identify with them as to go, hmm, he, he shouldn't kill him. He do nothing to nobody. He's a cartoonist. He got this money from there. He's just trying to smoke his cigarette. So many times when people are killed, the first thing that they do is bring up their past, prior, <laughs> weed, gang affiliation, drug possession, gun possession, anything that they can dig up from however long, it, how long ago it was just to go, see, see, he had priors already. I had reason to do what I did. This wasn't a good black man. I really wish that they would have taken it to where maybe he did have some, you know, a little, a little dirt on him, a little, a little whatever. And this man still, I, I know that's being picky, you know, with him being just so pristine and so clean and just so straight and narrow and so innocent. But a lot of the times, the, you know, the men that this do happen to, the teenagers that this do happen to, they, they do have, you know, prior depending on the community that they're in, they do have situations to where they do have something on their record. And that's the first thing that's plastered on everything as soon as they're murdered. That's the first thing that the officer goes to as soon as it, well, I saw, you know, in the system that he had blah, 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 blah. So I had reason to believe that he may be holding this, that he may be carrying this, that, you know, I was in fear for my life. Look at his rap sheet. Nobody has to be clean and crisp for you to give a fuck about their life, for you to feel like there is value in their life, for you to approach a situation not initially, instantly going for your gun. Just have respect and identify with me because I'm a fucking human being. I, I don't have to be the cleanest thing walking. I don't care what I had prior. Right now, it's not about that. It's about you stopping me for what you're stopping me for and me fucking going home. Everybody needs to go home, not just men like Carter. I know that's small, but once again, I'm hot, y'all. Well, you guys, that was my review for this film, this short film. I felt like this film had a lot to say. I felt like it really made a statement as far as what's going on. And I felt like us continuing to see him to die was, you know, not for nothing. I really enjoyed where they took the story and how they utilized what's going on to paint a picture for you so quickly. Now, of course, I did have, you know, that one little thing I didn't like. But other than that, I thought this was, you know, really strong and, you know, said a lot. And I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did not, you know, I'm always good for a little banter in those comments. <laughs> I'm all open to that. Anybody who wants to get in there, eh, what the fuck? Eh, eh, get on in there. We, we love that here. <laughs> Anybody who wants to, you know, respectfully share their opinion. We love that, too. If you love this film as much as I did, if you enjoyed it, if you got it, or if you, you know, if you got something that I didn't get, if you, if I missed something, put that in there too. Let's get that conversation going. I see you guys next time. Bye.